Today, we're revisiting the LG Tone Style HBS SL5. Do they still hold up a year later? Let's get into it. Hey guys, how's it going? My name is Adrian Reddix, and today we're talking about the LG Tone Style HBS SL5 one year later. I reviewed these headphones way, way early in my YouTube channel. If you go look at it, you'll see one, it's a horrible video. My, the whole time I'm not in focus. Two, um, back then, I thought they were okay. I thought I liked them a lot. Um, but I have some different opinions on them a year later. Let's talk about build quality. It's made out of plastic, um, but it's still pretty flexible. It's not stiff and rigid, so it's not um, uncomfortable on your neck, right? It's contoured so it can go around your neck and slope down so it's not like the older style tones that were just a semicircle and they were just sticking out and they weren't as comfortable they didn't lay they didn't contour to a human body they were just there it has this wire that's retractable that connects it to the base um the wire is kind of thin um to me it seems like it's very fragile. You'll, if you're not as delicate as you should be with these, you can easily damage your headset. The tips are okay. They don't seal as well as I thought they could, even with the different tips. Um, you get an okay seal, but the slightest sweat that comes, it'll start loosening up. And um, like if I'm working out, um, they will slip out. I couldn't find anything that says they're water resistant, so maybe they're not made to work out. And all the photos from LG that I've seen, people are sitting down at their desk, they're not running or lifting weights. The charging still stands up pretty well. You still get a three hour charge from a 10 minute uh, session. Uh, it uses type C USB, so that's good. It doesn't use um, like, uh, you still have headsets in 2021 using micro B. Why? How? About four months after I bought these, um, the left side went out. The left side does not work anymore. Um, the buttons still work, but the earbuds itself do not work. So I'm thinking either one, it failed, or two, I may have pulled this a little too hard and it stopped working. I don't know what it is. Um, but this side works fine. I don't know if it's the build quality of LG Tone. A couple of my friends bought maybe two weeks after I did. Theirs still work fine. The exact same model from the exact same store. So it could be me. It could be the build. I don't know. I do like there's minimal buttons on here. There's not a lot of buttons. There's what, three total buttons on the whole device. I like that because in the past, the old version of LG Tones had buttons everywhere. And it was, it got a little confusing, buttons on this side, buttons on that side, it just didn't work. So that's a good thing about these. Less buttons, less confusion, and that's great. Let's talk about form factor. I think that is the strength of this. Let's say you're in a situation where you don't have pockets and you don't have a place to put a case. Well, this comes in handy because it just stays around your neck. I personally don't, the more I wear it, I have sensory issues and I don't like it being on my neck, like skin contact. What I usually do is if I have these on me, I have a collar shirt and I can put them under the collar shirt and you can't see it. And I can just pull them out, bam, use them, pop them back in. And it still looks professional, but it's under my, my collar and it's out the way. I can still have it and nobody's the wiser, right? Sound quality. The sound quality, the more I listen to these, are okay. It's very mid-heavy. When you when you go to the upper end or lower end, it's kind of flat. It's it's not vibrant. The bass isn't as punchy and as articulate as I would like. And if you're a bass head, these are not the headsets for you. These are not. They're not gonna provide you that um, booming, punchy, articulate experience that people who love bass like that these are not it at all the mid-range it handles those very very well the upper end it's it's okay it's unimpressive um but anything in that mid-range it, it handles 
quite well. Now the music I listen to to really test these out is different from the, my core original. My wife got tired of hearing the same five songs over and over again. She told me, hey, you need to do something new. I'm tired of hearing these five songs. Me, 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 me. Please don't be mad. The first song is Bass Head by Bass Nectar, right? Because this song is very bass heavy. It takes headsets or earbuds or whatever through the ringer. If you don't have good bass, this song really points that out. It really exposes those weaknesses that you have in bass. And that's what happened with these. The bass was just kind of muted. I mean, it, it wasn't as punchy or I didn't feel it like I like to feel it. It, it, it. It's there, it's just there. It really didn't perform so well on this song. The next one is 4AM by Taiko Anuki. I've been really into Japanese city pop for the last a couple weeks and this is one of my favorite songs it's it's very mid-range focus that's why i picked it and these handle it pretty well onuki's voice is very prominent on this and it really lends itself to her she kind of stays at that that top of the mid-range doesn't go real high and this really makes her voice sound very smooth and it really comes out and i really like her voice on these headsets. The next song is Get You by Daniel Caesar and Kylie Yuchis. I think I said that right, Yuchi, Yuchi, Yuchis. Get You is one of those songs that's very smooth, but it is kind of bass focused. So the bass didn't perform as bad as I thought it would on this song. You could feel the bass and Daniel Caesar's voice is just like smooth, honey. It, it, it is, it is very, very good. It has kind of like a, I'ma say post Neo Soul feel. The next one is My Funny Valentine by Ella Fitzgerald. If you don't know Ella Fitzgerald, she is one of the greatest voices of the 20th century in America. What Ella did very well is her changing of notes is effortless. So she'll be way, way low, bop up real high, and then back in the mid range. Her changing of notes was so effortless and so smooth. And to me, when you listen to Ella, that can also expose uh, bad headsets. This song kind of found her in the mid range. She didn't go real high, real low. And these perform very well on her voice. Uh, I think I read a comment one time that her, her voice is liquid gold. And you know, a lot of people say that, but to me, she's, yeah, it's, it's her and Aretha Franklin for the best 20th century American voices. And these perform well on that song. And the last song is I Keep You Safe by Sagan featuring Shiloh. What this song does is it takes the same phrase, I'll keep you safe in these arms of mine. Uh, I forget the rest of it, but, and then it modulates it every eight count. So every eight count, you get a different version of that. And this is another song, I know it's lo-fi hip hop, but it's another song that really puts headphones through the paces. And it's really bass heavy also. And these kind of made the bass sound serpy. And it, it, it didn't mush them together, but it didn't, it, you couldn't feel it. It wasn't as, it didn't perform well at all. It was okay at best. These didn't really shine on this song. So let's talk about the Tone and Talk app. Back then, a year ago, I thought that the Tone and Talk app wasn't as good, it didn't perform well, and it didn't have any purpose at all. And I'm happy to say none of that's changed. It still is a horrible app. Uh, LG just didn't do a great job on this app. It only it, it doesn't really do much of anything. You get on there, you can manage notifications, how the headsets handle different system notifications. All right, good. And then it has presets. It has <laughs> the the one that's treble heavy. Usually when you have preset EQs and you want one side to be heavier than the other or to be more prominent, let's say it's treble. You wanna have more of the upper end, you lower the bass, but it's still a balanced good sound. Not with these. The treble rises and that's fine. That's what you wanna do on treble. And then the bass just falls off. It sounds, like it's in a can, it drops to the basement and it's just not, it's just not good. It doesn't sound good at all. And then you reverse it, they make the bass a little louder and the treble drop, it, it's just, they're just bad sound profiles. 
they did not do a good job on the app on the eq the tone and talk app is trash so if you get these i i don't know if i would even download it it's just not a good companion app it's one of the worst companion apps for a headset i've ever used it would be better if it didn't exist i mean it's not a hot take it's just not good. So who are these headsets for? I can only think of a very limited number of people who these are for. I think the form factor of these is the biggest strength of these. These are for people who don't want to carry around an earbud case, who don't mind the form factor, they just want to have a headset to pop on and go. And also if for some reason you like the way that LG headsets sound, this would be fantastic for you. I think the sound of these are okay especially in the mid range, it really shines there. But if you're really bass heavy or bass focused, it's not for you. I will have an affiliate link in the description below. So if you wanna get these, you can get them. So have you ever used any LG headsets? If you have, did you like them? Did you not like them? Tell me below. That's it. Thank you for joining me. If you like this type of video, give me a thumbs up. If you didn't like this type of video, give me a thumbs down. Tell me why you didn't like this type of video. And I'll catch you guys in the next one. Have a good one.